back to Skin Diaries. I'm Sonal and I'm with Dr. Shahnaz Arsiwalia. I'm really glad to be here today. I've watched so many of her videos and they're Thank amazing. You. They're so Thank informational. You so much. And I have a few questions today from my followers and a few questions from your followers as well Definitely. from the channel. And we're really excited to hear what you have. So I'm all up to answering all the questions that you have today. So one of the questions that I really I'm so I'm someone who uses my phone and laptop all day every day and I really want to know does that really affect your skin the recent studies have actually shown that uh, the artificial sources of light or the high energy visible light that emanates from our cell phones computer monitor uh, tv um, set uh, can also cause a uv radiation damage so the current concept in the world is actually to use products that not only protect you from UV radiation outside the world, but also right in your room from your daylight, from your cell phone light, from your TV monitors. And also you'll be very, very surprised to know uh, that even the infrared uh, rays from the gas in your kitchen mm -hmm. is almost equal to four times the sun exposure. You know, all, all the women are actually not walking on the streets right out in the sun. And we are an Indian brown skin and our color cells multiply happily. So uh, you need a broad spectrum sun protection and of course these lights are now getting important. How does one choose the right kind of SPF because I have tried a few different kinds. Okay. Some of them kind of clog my pores, some of them make my fe my skin feel really thick. Uh, actually SPF stands for sun protection factor. Mm -hmm. So when you pick up a bottle, mm -hmm. you look at three labels in a sun cream. Okay. So the first label is the SPF which is what is the ability of this sunscreen to protect you. Mm -hmm. So if the SPF says 30, that means you are protected 30 times when you apply the product and walk out into the sun than if you just gone out without a sun cream. So uh, the SPF decides the ability mm -hmm. and then you look at the label of UVA protection. Now the UVA are the rays which enter into your window panes and create broad daylight in your office or in your home. So the UVA rays are associated with a lot of pigmentary change and age, uh, aging changes uh, in the skin. So your UVA should have a label of 2 plus or 3 plus. Oh, so that and is what the PA++++ plus 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 stands yes, for? Yes, that's, oh. that's what it stands for. And then nowadays you'll have seen a label called as IR. So the okay. IR is infrared protection. But does regular use of SPF have any side effects on your skin? Like does it clog your pores? Or so, uh, if, if then you see the base in which the sunscreen is prepared. So, if the base is aqueous or water based, it has no ability to clog your pores. Mm -hmm. If the base is an occlusant or it's an oil based, uh, then uh, it has a high coverage, but it will uh, create clogging of the pores and what we call as pimpleogenicity mm -hmm. or uh, comedogenicity. Mm -hmm. So, uh, an aqueous base is safer. A gel base uh, is also safer if you don't want to be pimple prone mm -hmm. and a cream base uh, for a dry skin mm -hmm. and a lotion based when you are using a, a cream uh, a lotion on large parts of your body because a cream will take lots of time to apply. So like one of the other questions that we have here is that is it okay to kind of skip SPF if your makeup already has an SPF? Yeah, so what is happening is in, in the makeup world, you have these biomineral silica based uh, makeup products, mm -hmm. which uh, they add a little bit of SPF mm -hmm. and they say that this is an SPF, so you don't need to use a separate, mm -hmm. um, a separate sunscreen. So if I say that this bottle has an SPF of 30, that means it has been uh, tested by uh, a particular degree of medical rating mm -hmm. uh, on lots of patients to show that the substantivity of the sunscreen is 30 or 40 or 50 or whatsoever. So um, normally I, I tell my patients that uh, do not skip your sunscreen, you wear it under your makeup and then if your makeup has an additional uh, sun coverage because most of the biomineral makeup are also sort of physical blocks if they contain zinc oxide or iron oxide in them. So you get a double layer but relying only on a makeup may be a little bit of dicey, it may be a little dicey. Uh, so one of the next questions we have here is, does oily skin need more washing? So uh, it depends on the quality and texture of the skin, mm -hmm. but uh, washing, according to me, medically washing means cleansing. Yeah. So an oily skin is going to uh, attract a lot of bacteria from the world, a lot of pollutants, a lot of dust particles. So you need a cleanser to take off all the 
uh, all the surface uh, pollutants from the skin and allow the skin to breathe. So yes, definitely an oily skin needs washing. In fact, it needs a little more frequent washing than our dry skin. Is it important to skip moisturizer if you have acne? So um, uh, normally what we uh, do is we see whether you have acne on a dry skin or acne on an oily skin. Okay. Now when there's acne on an oily skin, you need to kill the bacteria, mm -hmm. sit the acne down and keep the skin oil free. So it simplifies the process because mm -hmm. we give you everything oil control, oil control face wash, oil control uh, moisturizer, sunscreen, mm -hmm. etc. But while you are bringing down the oiliness, you still need to replenish the moisture level of the skin mm -hmm. because you can't excessively dry off. Uh, you yeah. can't, the hydration of the skin is also its protective power. Uh, the, uh, the oil film uh, in the skin has certain protective chem chemicals too and mm -hmm. an oily skin is less sun damaged than a dry skin. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you, uh, you need to uh, moisturize an oily skin but your moisturizer has got to be uh, non comedogenic or I would put it down in a simple language, non pimpologenic. So people have the tendency to kind of believe that if you, you know, if you're using a product and if, and if it burns or tingles, then it's working. Is that true? Okay, so the, uh, the perception of the skin to a product mm -hmm. uh, depends on the sensitivity of the skin. Okay. So the face is a, uh, a skin which is rich in nerve endings mm -hmm. and blood supply. Mm -hmm. So the tolerability of a patient to a product depends on the sensitivity. Now okay. if the skin is super sensitive, even water will burn the skin, yeah. you know. And if the skin is tolerant, you can tolerate even the highest acidic product. So uh, a clinical bedside test that we do to find out if a person is okay with the product or no. We see if you apply the product and it just stings you, mm -hmm. but there's no visible redness, mm -hmm. then it's okay. If the stinging sensation is unbearable, mm -hmm. keep the product for a short time, half an hour and wash mm -hmm. off. So stinging itself does not mean intolerance to a product. And the last question we have for today is, that, uh, does your diet affect your skin? Very much. So your skin and hair is everything that is a hair on your plate. So g give us a few like, you know, holy grail, like food items that you think everyone should have to kind of maintain their skin and hair. Yeah, so uh, first is the skin should be well hydrated, so there should be enough consumption of water. But water is not the whole and soul, uh, so you need to have a balanced diet, and uh, which means enough nutrients and minerals uh, in your diet. So a lot of greens, mm -hmm. uh, it, you will be surprised to know that all bright coloured fruits, which are red fruits. and orange, okay. all bright coloured fruits which are red and orange have bioflavonoids, mm -hmm. uh, tomatoes are red, so they have lycopene. So they are actually anti-aging mm -hmm. and so red and bright colored fruits brighten your complexion and they are anti-aging also. All the greens are rich in vitamin B so mm -hmm. they help your skin and your hair mm -hmm. and um, all the, uh, the vitamin A is available in uh, fish and carrots so mm -hmm. you should pump up more of salads and um, uh, one important point because we discussed acne is uh, certain diets which are high in carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. So these carbohydrates, they have the ability to generate a chemical called as IGFR. Mm -hmm. And the moment IGFR gets into your body, mm -hmm. it will make you gain weight mm -hmm. and it will darken your skin uh, in the folds of your body. Really? And three, it will break you out into acne. So uh, the rule here is go off carbohydrates, pump proteins and um, uh, replace all fried into baked replace all fried into baked mm -hmm. and that is what actually keeps the skin going wow. so healthy diet does go long way yes i am so glad we had this conversation henceforth sure, it was a <laughs> pleasure yeah try skipping burgers and pizzas yes thank you so much doctor I, am, I hope everyone had their questions answered and i'm pretty sure they got more information yeah so, it was yeah. a pleasure talking to you so thank you so enjoy much. i i always love being on skin diaries Thank you so much for watching guys. Make sure you subscribe to Skin Diaries on YouTube and also check out our playlist. And please check out the Facebook page Skin Diaries J. Thank you guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye.